Hello and welcome to an Affinity Photo edition of Apple A Day. In today's episode, we're going to cover skin retouching with Affinity Photo, and we will be using the Healing Brush Tool, the Inpainting Brush Tool, and the Clone Brush Tool. And we'll also be using the Frequency Separation Filter. As you can see, I've already got a photo open, so I'm going to zoom in so we can get a closer look. So there's some skin blemishes here we need to clean up. Some dark circles in her eyes. There's a little eyelash there, some mascara. Uh, some dry skin on her nose. More blemishes here. Some stray hairs we need to get rid of. Darker patch of skin we want to lighten up. So there's quite a few things to do. Now you can start using the three brushes that I already recommended. The healing brush, the in-painting brush, and the clone brush. But if you did it right now, you run the risk of damaging the skin texture and making it look too smooth and shiny. I'm going to show the entire image by hitting Command-0. I'm going to select this layer. And the first thing we need to do is go under Filters and perform a Frequency Separation. Now, since I've been doing this, I've never changed any of the preset values here. I just hit Apply. So what the frequency separation does is it splits the image up into two layers. One layer holds the texture of the image and the other layer holds the color. So I can show you by turning off the low frequency, which is the color, so you can only see the high frequency. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that there's texture there. And of course, the low frequency just shows the color without the texture. So we don't mess with the high frequency layer. We only work in the low frequency layer. So I'm going to select that and I can start making changes right away. So we're gonna start by using the Healing Brush tool, and you can leave the opacity and the flow at 100%, and the hardness can be at zero. And this works very similar to the Clone Brush tool, where you have to choose a source area that you're gonna to apply to the destination area. So if I hold the Option key down, I can choose a source area, let's say right about here, and then I wanna paint or fill in that source area over these blemishes. Using the square brackets, I'm gonna reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And again, I'm gonna press Option to change the source area. I'm gonna paint over this blemish. Do the same thing over here. Another one here, I'm gonna reduce my brush size a bit. See, one difference between the Healing Brush tool and the Clone Brush tool is the Healing Brush has some smarts in it. It's, it knows its skin. It tries to not mess it up too much. It checks the areas around it and kind of blends in what you're doing. Whereas the Clone simply just paints the source image onto the area that you click. By the way, you can also turn on your high frequency layer so you can get a sense of what's being repaired. And you notice that everything that we touched up down here has not messed with the skin at all. You still see the texture. We've only changed the color. Just make sure that when you're working with both of these layers turned on, you have to have the low frequency layer selected. So here's something interesting. I'm going to blow that up a little bit. So this area here, that has texture in it. So no matter how many times I try to paint over it, it's not going to get rid of that textured mark. So I'm going to undo that. And this is something we're going to fix after we merge the high frequency and the low frequency layers back together. And we will use the in-painting brush tool to clean that up. I'm having the same issue with a lot of these bumps on her skin because they have texture. I mean, you can still smooth out some of the color, but the texture you can't really get rid of here. You can try to fix some of these by editing the high frequency layer, but I find it can be a little messy and it's a lot easier to do it when the layers are merged back together. Yeah, you'll notice that some of these aren't getting fixed, again, because they have texture. 
but I am cleaning up the color. I'm not even going to bother with the dry skin in the nose because that obviously has texture, so I'm going to fix that later. So really, you're, when you're using the frequency separation, you're just concerned about cleaning up skin blemishes and skin color. Um, so I'm going to work on the circles in her eyes right now. And again, still using the healing brush. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by using the right square bracket. I'm going to option click a light part of her cheek. And if I start painting, that's a little bit too severe. That's because the flow is set to 100. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Command Z. I'm going to go up to my properties and change the flow to a low number, say 10%. So sometimes this might not work properly with the healing brush tool. Affinity Photo tries to outsmart you and fill in the image to the best of its ability. But sometimes you just want total control. And I'm not really liking what's happening here. It's making the skin still too dark. So I'm going to undo this again, hitting Command Z a few times. And I'm going to switch over to the clone brush tool. And here I want to have a low flow about 3%. This works similarly to the healing brush tool where you have to option click on a source, which I'm gonna use the same part of her cheek. I'm gonna paint in. Notice I keep clicking back to the source area because as I move along, the source area moves along too. You can see the little plus sign moving. So you always have to go back and reset the source area. But you notice a difference here in that it lightens the skin. It's actually painting on the source. It's not trying to perform any artificial intelligence. It's just doing what you tell it. It's taking that source image and it's painting it on top of where I'm clicking. I'm gonna hit Command Zero just to see what it looks like at a distance. What's great again about using frequency separation is that I'm not destroying the texture. No matter how many times I paint over it, it's not blurring it out or making it look plastic or polished. For the most part. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Go over and do the other side. Again, you always have to be careful not to overdo it. Very easy to overdo it. And the last thing you want to do is make it look unnatural. So if you take out too much of the shadow, under the eyes. You know, it can look a little fake. I'm going to switch back to the healing brush tool to show you another example of why sometimes this doesn't work. And I have to put the flow back up and put it to say 50. And when I try to paint this on, it's mixing the source image with the image I'm painting it, and it tries to make it look as natural as possible. But in reality, it's just not quite cutting it. It's making it too dark. It's not what I want to do. I'm going to undo that and switch over to the clone brush tool. Make sure my flow is set to three. Select the area I want to copy and just start painting it on. And again, this copy is exactly what I want. It doesn't try to figure out what I want. I just wanted to lighten that area above her eyebrow and some of it on the side of her forehead. 
That's a little better. I think she had some red on her neck as well. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to go back to using the healing brush tool at a higher percentage of flow. You see, the healing brush tool does a great job. There's just certain circumstances when it doesn't do what you want. But that's what's great about Affinity Photo. You've got all the tools you need. You just have to swap them and know when to use which one. But sometimes you don't know that until you actually try one tool and then realize it doesn't work, and then you switch to another. Perhaps in time, you can get a sense of just looking at an image that you'll know one tool will work better than another. So I think we're done this phase of the retouching. So we're gonna merge these layers back together and perform the rest of the retouching using the in painting brush tool. So I'm gonna select these layers and press Command Shift E to merge them together. I'm gonna zoom in. And then I'm gonna click on the healing brush tool that's already selected. And if you hold it down for a second, it'll bring up a drop down menu. I'm gonna switch this over to the in painting brush tool. Reduce the size of the brush. Make sure my opacity and flow are set to 100. I'm gonna reduce that a little bit more. And I'm gonna go over these tiny little areas with the in-painting brush tool. This doesn't work well with large areas on the skin, but for little areas, this works pretty good. And sometimes when you use the in-painting tool, it might copy like a mole or something and it looks very obviously duplicated. So then you have to go back to using the clone tool or the uh, healing brush tool. But for the most part, this does a great job. And just like I said before, you don't want to overdo this. Some skin imperfections should be left alone. So all I've been doing here is using the in-painting brush tool and just clicking on these little areas. Sometimes I'm dragging because I want a larger area to be selected and fixed. But for the most part, you can tell by the red highlight that appears when I click. I'm making just tiny little fixes. Now, presumably you're not gonna be doing this for every photo you take, but if it's something that needs to be blown up on a billboard or it's, or it's an important portrait, yeah, you do wanna take the time to do some of this skin retouching. Now here's where the in-painting brush tool really shines. I'm gonna get rid of this hair just by following it with my mouse. Actually, I'm doing this on a trackpad, so it's a little trickier. There we go. And it's I don't have to fix that. It's perfect as is. Affinity Photo is amazing for this kind of thing. A couple more hairs over here. And this is really cool. So even though the background changes, it gets dark. <laughs> the Affinity Photo knows that, and it took out that hair without issue, even across light and dark. I'm so impressed with how that works. Okay, so I've just dragged in uh, the original image, so I can show you a before and after. And what you're looking at here is, of course, the retouched version. If I hide that layer, you can see what it used to look like. So you can see the, the dark circles, the, the shadow here. Most of the skin blemishes are gone. I think there's still a bit more I could touch up, like right around here. It's a little bumpy on her skin. Same over here. But like I said before, if you do too much, it can make the skin look too fake. This particular image is a very bright image. So it's hard to tell that the skin isn't too smooth or too polished because it looks so bright anyway. But I'll be doing more tutorials with different skin types in the future to show you how to touch those up, which is almost the same as what we've done today, but you can see the results on a different shade of skin. Anyhow, I think that covers it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on skin retouching in Affinity Photo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm John Martins. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Apple A Day.